Hi everybody, Timothy Ferris here with a few words about love. I don't suppose there's any subject on which more songs and poems and novels have been written than love. The Bible says God is love. Tolstoy said love is God. Moses Maimonides said that love makes the world go round. And if you've ever been in love, you know that it can really shake up your life, pick you up by the ankles and invert everything and produce unexpected uh, changes in the way you might have imagined your life would go. Today I want to look at just one narrow aspect, and that is the question of where love came from, or as the monotones put the question in their single released in 1957, who wrote the book of love? And the answer I'm going to say is pretty direct and straightforward, and that is evolution. It may sound not all that romantic, but evolution produced romance too, and a good deal else, pretty much everything that goes into the genetic makeup of a human being or any other creature on Earth stems from evolution. Evolution remains a subject uh, in public parlance that's a bit like sex was for the Victorians in England. Everybody knows it exists, everybody agrees that it's essential to the propagation of species, and yet we don't talk about it all that much. When we do, we tend sometimes to use misleading language, as when uh, we say that evolution selects for a certain set of genes over another, which is true, but it sounds as if uh, evolution somehow had a way of knowing where it was going in, in the future, or making plans. Evolution can't do any of that. The way Darwinian evolution works is simply that genetic information, as it is copied, let's say, in a cell division, so that the DNA molecule is read off by an RNA molecule, which in turn can print it onto another molecule, so that you can get the two cells dividing, and they may be genetically identical. But not always, because errors occur in the transcription, and those errors mean that some of the descendants might be a little bit odd or a little bit different from their predecessors. And those differences deployed into an environment that's changing and has many different areas or different regions within it may produce creatures that are somewhat better able to survive and reproduce than would have been the case had the genetic transfer been perfect. In fact, if you think about it, if genetic transfer were always perfect, then life would just remain at the status of, let's say, single cells. They would just keep dividing. They'd all be identical. They might do fine in the environment for a while or even for a long time, but you wouldn't get anything unusual or creative out of the situation, owing to perfection, which tends to be sterile. That's all evolution is. It doesn't have a way of planning ahead. It doesn't have any goals. You know, Chaucer said that love is blind. Um, that may or may not be the case in, from particular individuals, but evolution itself most certainly is blind. From this standpoint, love is so powerful in human affairs because humans who feel love, have a capacity for love, are more likely to stay together, to raise children, to promote their survival better, which in turn passes on that genetic inheritance, which may include a capacity for love. This is true in humans, and I expect in other animals, at least the animals that take a while in raising their young, animals like uh, beluga whales, where the mother continues to raise a young whale for about three years, or orangutans, who uh, to take, can take eight years to, to raise their offspring. Our ignorance of love amongst other animals is, in my view, a part of a, an, an appalling ignorance of the inner life of animals that I expect will be looked back upon rather disfavorably once humans have come to learn more about the other animals with whom we share this planet. Now, if you've been in love, uh, you've probably experienced its torrential power and I would suggest that that comes from the fact that there are really three human experiences that are directly related 
to the white hot core of existence for all living creatures and they are birth, love, and death. We don't remember our births. We can, will not experience our own death or obviously remember that. That leaves love and that, that torrential experience, everything, everything turn, turned upside down by, by love, is the closest we get to uh, having a direct experience uh, with the, the rawest currents of what made, made us and what made all of the other creatures with whom we share this planet. Many of us, having been lucky or unlucky in love, have mixed feelings about it. Um, a friend of mine accepting an award once said, um, I don't deserve this, but I have arthritis and I don't deserve that either. Could say the same sort of thing about love. It is thrust upon us by our genetic heritage. To sum up, love is a product of evolution, it appears to be one that promotes the well-being of one's offspring, especially if you're in a species that takes a while in, in rearing its offspring. And it is so deeply involved in life that we all, if we're in, when we're in love, uh, feel a, a certain sense of uh, a power that uh, we have only limited, if any, influence over. Or as Bob Dylan said of love, no matter what you think about it, you just won't be able to live without it. Take a tip from one who tried. Hey, thanks for listening. See you next time.